systems thinking provides yet another way in which students can view the world and address problems in new ways. By seeing their problem as part of a system, or more likely the interaction of several interrelated systems, they can then develop an understanding of how these systems work, the stocks and flows involved, the causal relationships between such elements, and then model and simulate the system to explore how changes in the variables in the system affect the problem that they are exploring. It is essential to recognise that no system model will be entirely accurate, that it should provide a far greater insight into the problem and how changes to the system could be brought about as a solution. While I use these templates when teaching about design technology, looking in this case specifically at energy systems, it has applicability to digital systems and frames the progression of students' understanding between bands. I find it can assist students in identifying inputs and outputs in their systems and the subsystems involved and how their systems change over time. That there are many approaches to developing student understanding of systems thinking using storybooks, uh, building stock flow models, developing simulations. Each have advantages and disadvantages. And a mix as students progress through the bands will be the most effective in developing their systems thinking. This week we're moving away from the worksheet style direct instruction tutorials you've explored in the coding and robotics activities to try to solve some real-world problems. In the coding activity, we're going to make use of your Makey Makey interface. So hopefully you have that at this stage. And use the Scratch programming language. Now this is far easier than it sounds. You will have used Scratch or something similar in week one. And for using the Makey Makey, there are a number of videos that provide examples and walkthroughs of how to set it up and connect it to your computer. And the problem I'm setting you is to use your Makey Makey input board to create a new way of controlling your computer so that one of three different messages displays on your screen. And this will make more sense when you see the Makey Makey example videos. And I really look forward to seeing your creative solutions shared on Padlet. Likewise with the robotics activity. Having built up your understanding of robotics programming over the last two weeks, you should now be aiming to solve some problems with your robot. In this case, to build a better alarm clock. And I really look forward to seeing what solutions you come to a robotics-based alarm clock. But if you're stuck for ideas, try an alarm clock that activates in the morning when the light level goes up above a certain point and then creates an annoying wake-up alarm or maybe then scurries away trying to hide somewhere dark so that you can't easily turn it off and only turns off then when the button is pressed. Again, I look forward to seeing some video or pictures on Padlet of your solutions. So we've now looked at developing three higher order thinking skills fundamental to digital technologies, strategic futures and systems thinking. Next week we will start into exploring computational thinking followed by design thinking. Then we will at last be ready to bring all of this thinking into an applied focus around developing students' ability to develop solutions to programming, robotics and information solutions.